9 o'clock this morning, it's going to be the uh, last interview for the upcoming uh, Chief Justice position. That's going to be uh, the acting Chief Justice, Raymond Zondo. That's on the way 9 o'clock. But we need to stay with uh, topics surrounding the former Chief Justice, Mohueng Mohueng, apologizing for comments about the country's policy on Israel. He has, however, made it very clear that his apology comes as he was forced by law uh, to do so. Former Constitutional Court Judge and Freedom Under Law Chair, Justice uh, Jan Krichler, joining me now on the show. Uh, Justice, good morning to you. Thank you very much for your time. Your reaction to the apology from the former Chief Justice, Mohueng Mohueng. Good morning, Gareth, and good morning to the viewers. I think my reaction is the reaction of most of us. It's mixed. We're pleased that that Nasty episode seems to be behind us. Sorry that the Chief Justice couldn't find it within his conscience to really give an apology, not just give an, a semblance of an apology. The lead up to the apology in quotation marks made it quite clear that the Chief Justice or the then Chief Justice didn't really believe what he was saying when he apologised. But it's, it's an apology. So why, why do you think uh, he, he wouldn't have felt he wanted to apologize, Justice? I'll tell you why, because he, he, the former Chief Justice had until the 3rd of February to make this apology, and that was yesterday, up to the last minute. Last minute. Yes, uh, he made it plain eventually that he was complying ostensibly, but that actually he felt no remorse at what the majority had found was a breach of the code of ethics of judges. Uh, I, I think he's, he complied with the order mm. uh, ostensibly, uh, sort of visibly, but not actually. So just because the law had said he had to apologize. So what does that then mean if you uh, would allow me, Justice, to uh, look ahead to what the new incoming Chief Justice uh, have to do in a situation like this, whoever it might be, and making comments on politics. I mean, this is, it, it's opened up a can of worms, hasn't it? I sincerely hope whoever is appointed now has learned a lesson that a chief justice should speak in public as little as possible and generally just on the bench. It's by being involved in general world affairs outside that judges get tripped up into getting into controversy, uh, whereas their job is to speak in court and only in court. I'm curious about that, Justice. Uh, I think many people would agree with you, but as the Chief Justice of the country, you're, you're almost one of the top leaders. You're the top leader in the courts. You're one of the top leaders and academics in the country's courts as well. Where is that line? Is it a very grey line, or in your opinion, Justice, uh, is it quite clear what you can and cannot get involved in? Uh, Gareth, like, like uh, all ethical rules, they're, they're, they're grey. They're not plain, straightforward, black and white. Uh, that a Chief Justice can and sometimes should speak on matters of public concern is clear. That a, no judge should get involved in political controversy is also clear. The two obligations get close to one another. It's when one slips from the one into the other that you get trouble. That's what happened with... Uh, then Chief Justice Mohueng, he ventured into a public debate on an issue of very, very heated public difference of opinion. And uh, yes, the, the upshot was the very uh, uh, unpleasant picture of a, the highest office in the judiciary having itself to stand as an accused in disciplinary proceedings. A distasteful picture brought upon the incumbent by the fact that he was talking where he should not have been talking. Uh, Justice, I don't want to take up too much of, of your time. I hope you'll allow me the indulgence of asking your opinion of uh, what you've made of the interviews. Not too much detail, of course, just your thoughts around maybe the questions being asked about and for the new Chief Justice over the past few days. Last question to you, Justice. Uh, Gareth. I was watching both the women cricketers 
and the JSC yesterday. The one was an inspiring picture, the other one was a decidedly depressing picture of a Judicial Service Commission still not fulfilling its proper function under the Constitution. To see members actually trying to trap a candidate with smear tactics was extremely disappointing. We in Freedom Under Law had thought that Messrs. Malema and Mpofu should not participate. We were clearly correct. The manner in which the Commission dealt with Judge Mlambo yesterday was really a disgrace. Justice, I appreciate your time. I'm sure we're going to try and get you back on at the conclusion of these interviews at the end of today, perhaps going into the weekend or next week, if you'll allow us the time once again with you uh, to unpack all of that. But for the moment, I appreciate your uh, time, as I always do here on the uh, South African Morning.